Here we go then, the first questions are all multiple choice on this one, so this video is going to take you through question 1 to 10. The first one is a question about gravitational potential energy, we can see that straight away. It's asking you to calculate the change in gravitational potential energy, it gives you a weight and gives you 2 metres to 8 metres. So this is just simply applying the equation gravitational potential is equal to mg delta h mass times gravitational acceleration times the change in height. So really this is just, can you work out a change in, can you recognise that mg is actually the weight, um, which is 7 times 6. So 7 sixes are 42. So the answer to this one is A. Make sure you just put a little cross in there. Um, just say here as well that this is also work done is force times distance. Uh, the force is the weight and the distance is the distance that we've moved. Next one, this question two is about knowing what your SI quantities and units are. So let's have a little go with that. What is a derived SI unit? Which is probably a derived SI unit where you just need to remember the SI units are um, distance, which is meters, time, which is seconds, um, amps, unit of current, kilograms, and degrees Celsius or degrees Kelvin. Do be better way to say that. It's also um, lux. But don't worry about that. So, which of the following is a derived unit which doesn't come in here? Well, meters is in there, time is not a unit, power is not a unit, so which of the derived unit is that one? Students have to solve the following problem. Object is bent upwards at a speed of 25 meters per second, so that is a uh, U, initial, how high would it be when the speed is 12 meters per second? That is V, and you need to, um, you don't actually have to work it out, you just need to choose the equation, okay? How high will it be when speed is 12 meters per second? We've got U, we've got V, which ones have got U and V in them first of all? All of them apart from this one, so we're not interested in that one. Um, you're asking to work out how high will it be? You're asking to work out S, and it's one of these questions where you need to remember you've got a little bit of extra information that you know, which is G 9.81. Okay, obviously, you don't need to work it out, but you do know it, and that is an acceleration. So now you're looking for with U, V, S, and A in it. So, not this one, not that one, haha, -ha. this one. So, it's D. So this is a question all about beer, obviously. Well, no, it's not. It's got nothing to do with beer. It's just a context, isn't it? It's about um, gas rising and solid particles falling. So you need to, which is on which row correctly shows the forces rising on a rising gas bubble and a falling solid particle. Okay, it's a little bit about uh, materials, but it's actually a question about Newton's first law, okay? because the forces are equal. So if it, some, the gas bubble is rising, meaning the weight of the gas is downwards, and the viscous drag, F, is going to also be downwards because it's going up. This solid particle is falling, the weight is downwards, that's okay. Up thrust is always up, and it is up in all of them. Okay, but the solid particle is falling, so the drag should be against that drag always opposes motion. So let's just find the ones where the drag is opposing the motion. This is right rising, drags um, against that, drags downwards, and this is falling, so drag is upwards. So the answer is B. So this is a materials question. Straight away you can see we're talking about a cylinder, so we've got a um, regular cross section. See the original length and you can see the new length. So the change in length, delta x is five centimeters. Okay, you can figure that out straight away. The quantity determined using five 
over 50 is, well that is delta x over x. All you need to do is go to the equation sheet and you will see the section on the young modulus. The young modulus is stress over strain, but it's not asking you about the young modulus, it's just the, the equations that you need. Um, the equation for stress, sigma, is f over a. So that's not f over a, is it? So it's not either of them that says stress. Strain is epsilon is delta x over x, and of course the change in length over the original length. Is it compressive or tensile? Well, it's compressive because it involves a squashing. It is, if you like, with a negative delta x. It's a negative change in length. So this one combines what you know about vectors, um, horizontal and vertical motion being independent of one another, and also what you know and need to be able to apply about graphs. Um, these are all displacement time graphs, we're told. Uh, S versus T, all of them, and which ones correctly show the vertical and horizontal components of the displacement for the object going horizontally from the roof of the building till it lands. You've probably some, done something like this watching coins fall off a ruler where one, one falls straight down and the other one falls in a parabola. So we're talking about the independence of the vertical and the horizontal components. You're told to ignore air resistance so there's no, um, there's no it's always 9.81 downwards, okay? And what you need to know, you need to be able to remember about your displacement time graphs, gradients, they are velocities. They were not asked to work out anything else, so gradients are velocities in this case. Let's have a little think about it. This would be a constant velocity in the vertical dimension. Well, no, because we know that there's a constant downwards acceleration, g. Horizontal one, this one's okay. There's no air resistance, so horizontally it's going to keep going at the same speed. Here, it's not moving horizontally. Well, no, it definitely is going to because it's thrown horizontally with no air resistance. This time, there's a constant speed downwards, so this one is out as well because we know it's gravitational acceleration. This one initially has a low speed downwards and then a higher speed downwards. It's a low gradient, little v. And this one is a bigger v. So actually this one is accelerating downwards and this one has a constant horizontal velocity. This seems all right, we'll check the last one. Yeah, this is okay for that same reason, low speed, high speed, uh, but this one is not changing position so it's not even moving horizontally. So it's got to be this one, it's got to be C. Three springs, X, Y, and Z, so three graphs representing those, uh, have forces applied to them. For each spring, the graph is plotted of length against Force. Graphs are shown below, there we go, one, two, three, and you're asked which of them obey Hooke's law. Should be okay with this really, um, remember what Hooke's law is. Hooke's law is simply stating that force is proportional to extension, delta x. Um, it, or you could, it does state it in the equation sheet as force is some constant times the extension. But hang on, we haven't got force and extension, we've got force and length. But if you think about it, if that was zero extension, okay, then this section here would be extension here. So really it's just about proportionality. Can you recognize the two proportional graphs? This one is not proportional, so it's not any of the ones with um, Z in it. The other two are proportional. So even though this one is decreasing in length, it is still proportional. Force is proportional to extension. So it is this top one here. Next part of this question here. Just ask, gives you a mass. M gives you a speed, V, and ask you for kinetic energy. So hopefully you've managed to go to the equation bank or just remember this from your GCSE. Kinetic energy is half mv squared. So you would do half times 1400 times 25 squared. Now you go for the calculator.
1400 times 25 squared equals 437.5 kilojoules, 437,000 joules in other words. Um, you've got to do a bit of rounding, so it's all to three significant figures, so to three significant figures that would be 438 joules, kilojoules, so, so it is C. This one is all about combining vectors, so you've got a plane flying horizontally, so that, uh, we're looking top down, so it's in the plane of the paper. The speed through the air is A, and the wind is blowing east with a speed B, so we've got two vectors basically. The speed over the ground is given by, how do we work that out? Well, there's probably a clue in these little algebraic expressions, so it's something to do with Pythag anyway. Whenever you're working with vectors, it's easier to imagine them as triangles combined top to toe. So let's just imagine B is here. Then we've got a right angle triangle, really easy to work with, and we can work out absolutely anything that we know with right angle triangles. So the, it is all about Pythagoras, which in this case is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So C would be the root of that. So that's a gimme that one. Hopefully you figured that one out on your own. Then the angle from north, okay, so north is um, upwards in this case, it's heading north. What's up here? So the angle from north is that angle there. Let's call that angle theta. Uh, we know A and B. And we know our trigonometry rules off by heart, I'm sure. Okay, so you've got the opposite, which is B. And you've got the adj, which is A, the adjacent, which is A. So you're going to use tan of an angle is opposite B over adj A. So theta is tan to the minus 1. So, there we go, D. Okay, that's all for the multiple choice. Let's go on to the more serious business.